Back with another video. A few days ago, you seen me do a high-end Intel build. Today, I'm doing the mid to low end. I have the Intel 11400F. Intel says they are very comfortable with their stocks. Look at their new heat sink. Stylo Milo now eh. We're gonna do a value build. There's a RTX 3060. We got the ASRock B560 M Pro 4 AC. Ah, power supply, 650 watts. Enough for 3060. We got Clef Bolt XR 2x8 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz because now this motherboard with this CPU, right, can overclock your RAM. You're not stuck at 2933 megahertz anymore. You are unlocked. Before that, special thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video. Today, we are featuring the Intel Core i5 11400F processor. Six cores. 12 threads, base clock speeds of 2.6 GHz and boost clock speed of 4.4 GHz. Wow. You can find it online now at about 250 SGD to 300 SGD. And I know I already mentioned this, but this CPU paired with the new B560 motherboard that finally unlocks RAM speed will be very appealing to PC builders who want value. Click on the link below to learn more. Okay, let's start with the motherboard and uh, the CPU. Okay, one thing I like about Intel stock cooler is that it's really really easy to put on. It's like one of the easiest. Anybody can put it. It's not the biggest but now they updated it to all black. Thermal paste. I like to do X method. X marks the spot and this is how easy you put Intel CPU cooler. Click. Click, click, click. Easy. CPU fan. Oh, wow, why they got CPU? Why they got two CPU fan one? Interesting. CPU fan one. Okay, RAM. 3600. Megahertz populate the second and fourth. I'll say this build is really the sweet spot for value. Not too expensive, but you know, GPU prices are expensive. La, so I'm pretty sure if let's say the RTX 3060 is over budget, you still can go down to a RTX 2060 or 2060 Super, maybe even a 1660 Super. Yeah. M.2 SSD, NVMe SSD, of course. Okay, we have the Lexa 512 gigabytes of. Gen 3 NVMe SSD. For entry build motherboard, it's actually pretty good. Do you have like heat sinks for the NVMe SSD? Go see it every day, man. IO Shield. Okay, motherboard in. If you're wondering what case this is, it's the Aftershock Rapid case. You, so you can't really buy it if you just want the case. If you want a similar case, you can get the Techware Forge M. CPU power. CPU power. PCIe power. PCIe power. Motherboard power. System is powered up. Now for the front panel headers. Okay, so here's something that I learned. A lot of front panel connectors on the motherboard is actually exactly the same. HDD, bottom left. Positive. Positive, power LED. Top left. And power switch. Hopefully I'm right. USB 3. Audio connector. Audio connector. Cable management later lah. GPU first, ah. Huh? RTX 3060. Let's test it out before I do some cable management, yeah? Yeah? Look at that! Got RGB way. Entry level motherboard got RGB way. Oh, not bad. Okay, turn off PC. My knowledge of the front panel actually works. Eh, actually good. Actually correct. Ah, actually correct. That's the word. Look, look at that. Looks like a unicorn just vomited with RGB lights. Ah, yes. Correct. But I want to go BIOS. Intel i5 11400F at 2.6 GHz. Total memory 16 GB. Correct. So I think what I want to do is do the cable management and then enjoy the PC for a while. Ah, okay. So I'm running Cyberpunk on Ultra settings with Ray Trace at 1080p. Let's go 1080p. Let's go 2K. 1440p. 60. Ooh, suffering, suffering. 40. Okay, la, quite standard lah. 40. Okay, police come now. Grenade, grenade, grenade. Okay, it goes about 33 when it's intense. 40 average maybe. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Xiao Liao, Xiao Liao. 1414p ah. Don't forget ah, and he's running ray trace at ultra. So if we actually bring down the settings, right? Turn off ray tracing, but still turn on DLSS. I'm sure we can get a steady 60 to 70 FPS. 
Ah, 66 FPS, 65 FPS. Bring on the action. Okay, come. Police, come. Police. I see you, I see you. Grenade, grenade. Okay, it goes down to 55 FPS. Okay, I, okay. Police, man, crazy. I'll say for ultra settings without ray tracing, it will give you about 55 FPS. Goes down to a 50, 45 sometimes and when it, things get tougher. So I think if you have a 1440p monitor, you should go about medium settings if you want to get to that higher 60 frames to 90 frames. Medium settings, 1440p, 90 FPS and the game looks pretty awesome. Goes down to 79. 75 maybe? Why you only run Cyberpunk now? Because usually if you can do steady 60 frames per second on FPS, right? You can basically play any game, any AAA game, no problem. But of course, I'm going to do proper benchmarks. Previously, I had to do benchmarks one by one. But with the help of Aftershock who provided the hardware, I could do it all at once. Saved me a lot of time. These are the three setups that I'm running. I only picked the CPUs that were in the price range of $200 to $300, which is why I didn't pick the R5 5600X since it costs $500 plus. For the motherboard, I picked the H410 for the 10400F because I believe that is what most people would buy if they got the 10400F last year. For RAM, I went for 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz for all the setups. But do note the H410 would lock the memory speed to 2666 megahertz. And for the GPU, I went with the RTX 3060. I benchmarked four AAA games all with inbuilt benchmarks for accurate testing and one competitive game, CSGO, all running at max setting at 1440p. First game, Total War Troy. A CPU intensive game, 11400F and 3600 are basically the same. But the 10400F is lagging behind, especially at the 99th percentile. Assassin's Creed Vanhalla also paints a similar picture. The 10400F is behind on the 90th percentile, but not as much as Total War Troy. However, for Division 2, the 10400F is just behind by 1 FPS on both average and 90th percentile. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was confusing when I looked looked at the test, it was unusual as the 3600 clearly beats both Intel's 11400F and 10400F. But I remembered it's because Shadow of the Tomb Raider was made for AMD CPUs. And that's why the 3600 performed better. Last game, CSGO, a competitive game which is CPU intensive. This is where the 11400F shines at its price range. There is a significant improvement compared to the 3600 and the 10. 400F. Remembering that the 3600 is $55 more than the 11400F. Okay, last benchmark, Cinebench. The 11400F has impressive single core performance with a 20% improvement from the previous 10400F, which is something you don't usually see from Intel. In conclusion, the 11400F is definitely the CPU to get for lower end PCs. It's basically a no competition for now. It runs better in most games, has better CPU performance, and at a lower cost. And with the inclusion of the B560 motherboard that unlocks RAM speeds, this combination will be very appealing to PC builders at a budget. Intel finally woke up their idea with the i5 lineup. And I can't wait for them to do the same for the i7 and i9 lineup later this year. The last thing I want to talk about is the price. Without the price increase at MSRP, this PC would cost 1490 Singapore dollars with Windows 10. But with manufacturers increasing prices and stock shortage, the street price will go upwards of 2000 maybe even 3000 So if you're planning to buy a PC in April or May and you can't find a GPU at a good price, you have three options. Build a PC without a GPU first, but go with the Intel i5 11400 so that you can use the integrated graphics. You probably can't play games at high FPS, but you can at least use the PC for other stuff other than gaming. Two, build a PC with a less powerful graphic card 
the Intel i5 11400F with a 1650 Super will allow you to play most games but just not at max setting at 1080p. Last option, buy a pre-built PC. It will still be more expensive than building it yourself at MSRP price but definitely better than the street price. So I hope this information is helpful to you. Special thanks again to Intel and I am done. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.